You can't get any better than this, really. This thing looks amazing. We've been trying to get this ever since we arrived in the Philippines. It just looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah. More yeah. Band in the Philippines. That is incredible. My name is Jacob. Nice. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are here in Manila. It is one of our last days here. So we're gonna go and explore, see what we can find, get some food, and yeah, just enjoy one of our last days in Manila. Right, first stop is to drop the washing off. As we've been here a week, we've already used up a lot of our clothes. So we need to go and do some washing. Luckily, we found a laundrette that's really cheap. 180 peso for six kilograms of washing. That's really good. A lot cheaper than we found it elsewhere. We've arrived at Silayan. So we've dropped off our clothes, we're going to come pick it back up tomorrow. The owner was really nice actually, he came out and said, am I the vlogger that's been around here recently? And I don't know if he's confusing me with anyone else, supposedly I look like someone who does the vlogging. Hello. <laughs> supposedly he saw us walking through just yesterday or just last night. Just stumbled across a little stall, it says Japanese cake. Oh, so they've got different flavours. Oreo chocolate and cheese. They're like little pancakes. Mm. Should we get a couple of each? Yeah. Can I get two tooths? Thank you. Thank you. Well, these are nice and hot, but with it being so hot at the minute, yeah. you always want to just eat something cold. So we've got the little cheese Japanese cake. Oh yeah. I don't know what kind of cheese it is. It doesn't taste like real room cheese. It's not got the same consistency, but it is actually sweet as well. Oh. It's pretty good though. And now I've got the Oreo one. This one I'm Oh, it's got a whole Oreo mm. in it. This one I'm more excited about. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's, well it's just like an Oreo with dough on it. You can't get any better than this, really. Right, we've come into a little place called Cups to get some aircon and a coffee. So I've got myself a hazelnut frappe. Oh, that is so good. It's really hazelnut -y. Oh, yeah. You can really taste like the nuttiness. Mm, yeah, that's really good. We've only been walking for about... 20 minutes? Not even that. Do you not think? I think it's been like 10 minutes. And we've already had to stop to get some aircon and a cold drink. So I don't know how we're going to get on today. It's ridiculously hot out there. We're actually planning on heading to Fort Santiago, which is about... <laughs> another 45 minute walk away. So it's definitely gonna be a sweaty one, but we're determined to kind of just walk there and see what we find along the way, because that's the best way we like traveling. We just prefer to just walk it and see what we stumble across, because usually that just gives us some of the most authentic and genuine experiences. We'll see how long we last. <laughs> okay, so we've come to the Santa Cruz Parish Church it looks really really nice it very much reminds me of the churches that they have in malta it's very like yellow and like pastely white but it's sunday at the minute and there's a church service going on so i don't think we can actually go inside unfortunately but we'll give it a go this thing looks amazing so pretty. yeah Well, that was really nice. We were sat down for about half an hour just listening to the service. Yeah, it was really nice in there. It's almost like a TARDIS where it was just like, it looked so small from the outside. And then when you got in there, it was just absolutely massive. But that's exactly why we like traveling the way we do and why we like exploring places by foot. If we'd have just got one of the jeepneys, we might have seen that church and kind of had a brief two second view of it but then it would have been gone we wouldn't have been able to go inside and really like look at it and obviously it's really nice that there was a service going on yeah i think exploring by foot just gives you those opportunities to really kind of take the time to explore somewhere and like really look at places i was impressed that they were like live streaming the service mm. So that if you couldn't see the guy at the front, you could just watch the TV screen. But they had so many like big professional cameras. Yeah, really impressive. Made it to the river. I think we need to just go off in that direction. I can see a black turret. I'm pretty sure that is Fort Santiago. Mm -hmm. 
right, we've just found the Chinatown Gate. That's a pretty impressive one, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. Okay, so it's been another 20 odd minutes of walking. It is a very, very hot one today, but we've actually arrived at the Minor Basilica and Metropolitan Cathedral. <laughs> Hello. It's opened up into this really nice little courtyard area, hasn't it? It reminds me of um, the buildings in Medaka Square. Yeah, yeah, true. So yeah, we're coming for lunch at Chow King. When we went to the basketball the other day, some of the little kids, we asked them what their favorite place to eat, what their favorite food was. And they were all like, Chow King, Chow King, you gotta try it. It's owned by Jollibees as well. So I've got high expectations. So it looks like they're doing a lot of Chinese fast food. So it looks like you can get like shumai fried rice, sashi bao, wonton mi. Right, so we've gone for their version of wonton mi, which is called wonton mami, and shumai with rice. Chopsticks definitely don't seem to be as much of a thing in the Philippines. Yeah, I feel like we've not used chopsticks once. This smells really good actually, you know. It looks nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple broth. It's not too extravagant or anything, but it tastes nice. For 89 peso, that's pretty good. That actually looks quite nice for a fried rice, you know. It's really soft. The shumai is good. It reminds me of that one we had the other day for that street stroll. Oh, really? Like really soft and just like melts in your mouth. Yeah. So we've just ordered some Halo Halo. Hello, hello. We've been trying to get this ever since we arrived in the Philippines. We think it's quite a popular dessert in the Philippines. But every time we try and get it anywhere, the shops either shut or they're sold out. And we finally managed to order some. So very excited to see what this is all about. Oh, it looks like a big old thing. What is this? Whoa. There is all sorts in there. This looks incredible. There's so much to it. These look like Rice Krispies. There's random jelly bits. There's this, which I'm assuming is like taro ice cream. Oh, this is flan, maybe? Oh, yeah. It looks like rice underneath. Oh no, oh, shaved, shaved ice, ice. Shaved ice, right. And I I'm wonder if it's one of those things where it's like you should mix it all I'm together sure and get that. a big mouthful of everything. Yeah, mix in. Right, well this doesn't look the most appetising, I will admit that. I'm excited to give it a bit of a go. We're wondering if it's like the Filipino version of ABC or something. Well, that's what ABC is like, isn't it? It's just got loads of different random things in it. Yeah, that's well nice. There's so many different textures and flavours in it. Like you get rice crispy bits, you get the jelly, you got the ice, you've got some chewy something or another in there. Like there's so much to it. Oh, it's quite coconutty. You can taste the taro, but I feel like you can taste the coconut more. Yeah. It's really like creamy. It kind of reminds me of like cold rice pudding. Yeah, yeah, a little. What is that? Yeah. I have no idea. It's like a little rat's tail. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's a bit of coconut. No idea what that is. Does it taste nice? It's all right. It's like soft. It almost tastes like cake. Oh, they like little kidney beans. What an odd dessert, but it it's tastes nice really good, yeah. I'll definitely get this again. A hundred percent. Really refreshing as well. And the thing is as well, we've got this from a chain Chow King. If this is what a chain version of Halo Halo is like, I can just imagine like a street seller. I can imagine their Halo Halo being like even better. Bye. See you, mate. <laughs> He was such a cute kid. So he come up to us when we actually first come into the restaurant, saw us, got up from his table, and especially come over to us and went, welcome to the Philippines, welcome to the Philippines. It was so cute, wasn't it? And then he's like staring at us, giving us the biggest smiles. Such a nice kid. Now that the Halo Halo has been eaten, we're off to Fort Santiago. It should just be down the road. Right, so we've just come into the Fort Santiago area. We've paid 75 pesos each to get in. There was a poster outside that said something about Fort Santiago on Sundays and it's Sunday today so we're not sure whether it only opens on Sundays or whether they have like this event on Sundays but either way I'm glad we came today. So 
This is Fort Santiago Gate. I believe it was built by the Spaniards during the colonisation. And it was initially built in 1571. It was a wooden structure but ended up getting burnt down so then they ended up reconstructing it with volcanic tuff in 1590 and then it's been through a ridiculous amount of wars and has lived to this day. Plaza within the Fort Santiago used as open space for military drills, marches and arms, a monument to Jose Rizal, national hero martyr erected on this site in 19. So we just went into the museum about Jose Rizal, which unfortunately we couldn't film inside, but it was just about how he's had such a big influence on the Philippines and their independence. It's basically the case where he was convicted, supposedly wrongly, about starting kind of like an uprising and stuff. And he was basically sentenced to death by the Spanish. Since that point, it basically just inspired the Filipinos to then, you know, fight for their freedom and kind of it really pushed them forwards in their independence. Jose Rizal is a really big figure in the Philippines and for good reason. So this is a bit more morbid than we initially thought. It basically holds 600 decomposed corpses which were victims of like all the atrocities that happened in the Second World War. They were basically buried en masse under this marble plate. 600 bodies. This is what the kid was talking about. So there's like loads of Lego structures in here I think. Oh, it's an eagle. I thought it's like some giant alien monster. It looks like it's from like the Avengers. The great Philippine eagle. Oh, the uh, cat fell through you. Oh, it's a nice view over the river. Look at that sunset. Okay, we're now going down to the dungeons. It was the Japanese that did it. Really? Mm. It says here that they trapped hundreds of men at a time in a cell all together and just let them starve to death. I feel like it's crazy to think that it's bright in here because of the lights. If there weren't any lights, this would be pitch black. Right, so we've had a look around the fort and been down into the dungeons and everything and now we've come back out and this place is all lit up now, all of the like, little lantern lights are on, it just looks absolutely beautiful and there appears to be some kind of entertainment going on up ahead, so yeah, let's go and check it out. So we've just come from the Fort de Santiago and we're now walking towards the Rizal Park. But we've just come across a little market, so let's have a look what's through here. We're playing some kind of card game here. We can't work out what the game is. All looks very tense though. There's a lot of money on the line. Yeah. It's a very quiet game, like they're not talking or anything. We've arrived at Rizal Park. You can just see some fountains over there in the distance, which look nice. But it's actually jam packed here with people. There's so there's people everywhere. So there's a free concert in the park as well, it seems. It's very cool. Right, we're going to head back to our area now to get some dinner. The other night we were walking along and we got called over by a big group of people. We'll insert the footage now. Hey, 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 hey,
Yes. High five. Yeah, we've heard it's good. We're gonna come back tomorrow or maybe the day after. Filipinos are very friendly, bro. Come yeah. here. Thank you, bro. See you later. Thank you, bro. Okay. See you later. I See you later. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. What up, gang? Now, they actually own a restaurant and they asked us to come for dinner. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go and have dinner at their place, eat some local food. Dinner has been served. So we've gone for some fried chicken and rice. That chicken is really good. The skin looks really crispy. And then I've gone for some pork belly soup, which looks really, really rich in flavor. That's yummy. That's so to... yummy. Which one? All of that. All of it, okay. All right, it's all really yummy, supposedly. So I'm looking forward to it. How's the chicken? Yeah, pretty good. Nice. It's got a really nice, like, salty flavour to it. Oh, good. This looks incredible. Like, the soup looks so nice. Oh, yeah. It doesn't taste overly porky. It tastes quite like it's got, quite like it's mixed in with, like, a uh, really strong gravy. But it's really nice. You can, like, you can taste the little vegetables and stuff, which have been, obviously, stewing in it for such a long time. No, oh, no. A lot of it is like the crispy pork rind. Then there's also like a bit of meat on it as well. But the rind, even though it's been stewing this for, I'm presuming, quite a long time, it's still super crispy. It's really, really good. That is incredible. Just cleaned up and that was really, really good. I know I keep talking about it, but that broth was so nice. And the pork, it almost absorbed a lot of the, the soup and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's really, really nice. We've also had these two little friends joining us for dinner. Hello. They're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Looks like a bit of a party up here. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they're playing basketball and then they're playing basketball <laughs> over there. It's like three different games on the There's so much happening, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what's your name? Uh, my, my name is Emma. Emma. Emma, what's your name? Jacob. What is it? Jacob. Jacob. Is it Jacob? His name is. My Jacob. name is Jacob. Nice. M -E -B. Huh? Essay. Is that you? Nice to meet you. Right, Jacob's been invited to play basketball. Emma. Emma. Oh. I'm so rubbish at basketball, but they're so happy when I actually get one in. Probably because they're like, we can actually play again now. <laughs> Hi Hayley. That was so lovely. All of those kids were just adorable, all coming over, chatting to us, wanting us to get involved. Jacob played a bit of basketball. It was very frantic, but a lot of fun. Let's come across this volleyball game. <laughs> Right, just come across all these kids in the street and they want to say hello. Hello! I'm Sardus, here from hello. Philippines! It's my Nila. Hello! Hello! Hey. Hey. Goodbye! Hey. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. Bye.